Blessings, blessings, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Word Unfiltered, where there's no filters, no chasers to the Word of God. I don't take from it. I don't add to it. He has already perfected it enough. Yeah, I'm so excited about this video. I come across so much craziness that's going on, not just in the world, but in the church. And it's exciting and encouraging to see someone who has a huge following, a large platform that is famous, you know, stand up for Jesus Christ, who actually takes advantage of the platform that he was given to bring glory and honor to God. So here we have DeMario, DeMario Davis. He plays for, uh, in the NFL for the New Orleans Saints. I don't know too much about football, okay, but I've been coming across a lot of people that is like huge in the sports, okay, industry, athletics or whatever, and they are standing up for Jesus Christ, okay? Like God is gonna get his glory, definitely is going to get his glory okay and there are many that's going to stand up for jesus so here this is a post game um interview and he takes advantage of this time to bring glory to god so let's watch it and see you know what mr davis uh says about our lord and savior uh i started to realize something um man we play this game on sundays and it's really the Lord's day. And when the day we should be worshiping the Lord, a lot of times players are getting worshiped mm. and we get to go on this ball field. So since so many of us didn't get to go to church today, I have a word that I want to share. I know this is a little untraditional. Ooh. So like I said. I love it. I love it. He said when we're supposed to be worshiping the Lord, many of the players, okay, in the NFL are being worshiped. Buckle mm. up. Uh, Revelations 3.20 says... See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and eat with him and he with me. I want to tell y'all about a knock that I heard this week. A lot of people don't know this, but on yes. Friday, my daughter, she's four years old, she had her third um, epilepsy seizure attack. It's my same daughter who uh, mm. survived retinoblastoma. Uh, she's been totally clear to that. But she had her, her third... Um, seizure and it's been almost two years she was uh we definitely want to keep his daughter in prayer but i know that god is a healer okay he's a healer of all diseases about a month away if she would have had no seizures for one more month then she would have been off the medicine but now we have to start that clock all the way over it was on friday when we was a bunch of kids were over the house and she was playing and i noticed something was off um and I told her mom I thought she was having a seizure. Her mom is pretty good. She, she saw it, my wife. And we took her in her room, didn't want to cause a scene. And she started to foam at the mouth. And uh, it was worse, her worst seizure. Mm. For 30 minutes, um, she seized. Um, she wouldn't come, and we had to call the uh, paramedics. They came. And so over the course of time, it ended up being a total of 30 minutes. They got her in. My wife got in the paramedics with her. I got behind them driving. Um, you can imagine all the thoughts that's racing through your mind. The last sight you see of your daughter is she's totally out of it. Um, right. Got to the hospital and my wife told me. Right. That's when you have no choice but to lean and depend on God. Told me that my daughter stopped breathing in the car twice. Um, so I'm, of course, praying. We get to the hospital. They put, give a bunch of medicine. They should seize the stop. She's laying there. And at this point, if she sees for 30 minutes, you, 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 you start to fear there could be development issues that could mess with her brain. Um, you know, she stopped breathing. If there was no oxygen going to her brain, you know, brain you start to think about her speech mm -hmm. be slurred or anything, um, or worse. So we prayed and we mm -hmm. prayed, and she had medicine, and, and my wife and I had to stay overnight at the hospital. And in the middle of pray and we prayed the night, probably about three o'clock, I heard a knock, and the knock the knock was my daughter. I prayed for her. I said, God, let this just be an attack from mm. the enemy that's just trying to be a distraction and let him have overplayed his hand and my daughter come back stronger than before. When I heard my daughter talk in the middle of the night, and my daughter, she doesn't have any develop, development issues, praise God. Thank she doesn't you, have Jesus. any slurred speech, you know, prior to this. She woke up talking clearer than she was talking before. Now, anyone who deals with epilepsy knows that it takes a little a few days for them to come back. You know, they usually can get back to normal mm. where they were. 
um, but it takes a couple of days to grind gears a lot. For them, yes, it takes a few days for them to come back to, to normal. Because what their body is like, it's like the TV just static in their brain. She was talking clearer than before. And it was 3 o'clock, and we heard her talk, and we let her talk for about 20 minutes. And we said, hey, baby, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's nighttime. Let's go back to sleep. You know, and I just prayed. I started saying, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The next morning when she got up, my daughter was so sharp. She was able to talk to her, me and her mom. I mean, clear conversation. She's sharp for a four-year-old. No stuttering. All her words clear. And my daughter, like I said, my daughter is already sharp. She was sharper than before. And if any of if any of you were able to have a conversation with my daughter, you wouldn't know anything had ever happened. So we had a birthday party for my seven-year-old daughter that day. She got to be released from the hospital, and she came back home, and it was as if nothing was happening. She was playing with the kids the day before, and she had the worst seizure that she had ever had. And the next Mm. day, she's back out there playing. God is so good. I'm so happy he's taking this opportunity to share this with those who are listening that may not know Jesus Christ, you know, those who are watching, to know that he is real. He is a living. Like, God is like, we serve a God of action, okay? He's not laying dormant. There's still miracles, signs and wonders that are following those who believe. And with the kids, now, of course, we can't let her get overstimulated. We have to keep bringing her in, have to keep cooling her down, can't let her do too much just because of protocol. But... When I tell you, uh, I, I got a chance to see, hear a knock from God. And what I want to share is we get to play this game, and it's great. And there's so many amazing things that happen in that game. And everybody wants to hear about them. But when we could leave this game, we go back to being regular people. And regular people are living life, and people are waiting for a knock. And the word says who mm-hmm. Jesus is. He's knocking at the door. All you got to do is get up. And so on the way, mm. man, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. But I'm praying, and I'm trusting, yes. and I'm believing. Open and I'm asking for my daughter to make it through. I'm asking that she's better than before. And God gave me just what I asked for plus some. I was blown away. And at that point, I knew, well, I, yes. the game is already, this, the game is going to take care of itself. <laughs> my, my knock had already been, been answered. And I just want people to know, like, if you got stuff going on in your life, lay it before the Lord. Lay it before the Lord and trust and be expecting of a knock because the word says yes. what you have to do bible says cast all your care upon him for he careth for you but you have to believe in him believe on him meaning depend on him have faith in jesus get to know him establish a relationship with him and these are the benefits that you will reap was you have to get up and open the door he's not going to open the door for you he's going to knock but you have to be listening and waiting for the knock. And when you see it, you have to get up and open the door. And you can, you expect the knock even when it doesn't come the way you feel it should come. You have to trust and believe that God knows best. He knows your beginning, your middle, and your end. He knows what's best for us. Even if we don't receive the healing here, we'll receive it over there when we cross over into eternity where there's no more pain, no more suffering, no more heartache. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And your blessing is going to be there. Now, I'm going to be here to talk about football next week. I wish y'all well. Happy Sunday and praise God. Thank y'all. That was so awesome. It gives me hope. Like all are not lost. The enemy does not have everyone. And there's going to be a great revival that is taking place. Okay. And these people with huge followings and um, prestige and, you know, whose name is known, they are standing up for Christ. And I'm so glad that he mentioned the name of Jesus Christ because everybody mentions God, but everybody's not serving the same God. Some people serving the God of nature. Some people serving the God of this world. Some people serving, like, everybody's not serving the same God. But when you mention the name Jesus Christ, it's distinct. Okay, the God that you're talking about is very distinct. So we thank God for that. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, get to know him. He's knocking at the door of your heart. And he's saying, all you got to do is let me come in and I will sup with you. I will dine with you. I will commune with you, meaning I will have relationship with you and you with me. God bless you.